What up, folks? What it do? Welcome to another episode of the best advice ever podcast. Yeah, with your boy, comedian Mike Goodwin. And as I start every episode with the segment on the road again, which which I was on the road again. Matter of fact, I was in a place that's very familiar to me. I've just never been before. Statesboro, Georgia. Now, the reason I say it's very familiar to me, I I served in the United States Army. I don't know how many people knew that, but I served at a place called Fort Stewart, Georgia. That's in Hinesville, Georgia. Well, Hinesville is about an hour and 13 minutes from Statesboro. Knew about Statesboro. Matter of fact, a lot of my co-workers would go to Statesboro to party. Matter of fact, they would go on Thursday nights. Thirsty Thursday, in which uh, many colleges call it. These cats would drive from Hinesville, Fort Stewart, and like go to Statesboro, like party, and get back at like four in the morning. Sometimes folks will like pull up in their PT uniforms at like 550 and come straight to formation. Like that was what was going on in Statesboro. Now at the time I had a girlfriend, so I never made any of the trips to Statesboro with the fellas. I just, that, that I was, I was in a relationship. <laughs> I never made my way to Statesboro. So it was a little bit, Interesting to me to go to Statesboro for the first time. I had an event for an organization called Athletes in Action. Man, it's it's tremendous. They're doing uh, some wonderful things with their athletic department and their students at Statesboro. They basically, you know, it's a Christian organization that's discipling believers. And, And these athletes are leading Bible study, prayer groups, there's coaches involved, the athletic directors. If, I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. Like it was absolutely amazing. And I told them at the event, cause again, it was a fundraiser for, uh, sending athletes to camp and, and raising money to provide support for the staff members that work in the organization. And I told them that um, the guys that I were, were, were in the Army with, they would come to Statesboro, but they were not coming for Bible studies. No, sir. No, ma'am. They were not. <laughs> they were not doing that. Uh, but shout out to, to Matt Wise. If you are looking for an organization to donate to or and to like highlight the good work that they're doing, athletes in action, AIA is definitely something stamp of approval. I'm even going to send a check at some point to, to their efforts and, and what they're doing. Cause it's tremendous. And I, and I had a great time in Statesboro did, did the banquet, the fundraiser. I even had a conversation with a gentleman who was doing the video and we were talking about, he had, you know, a son that was in Utah and, and one of the rules that he had for his, family growing up that when you go to other places you cannot eat and places that have that you have access to back in statesboro so you need to find locations that you don't typically have he he he, he's taught his son this and his son is taking it and run with it he finds all the hole in the wall i mean great uh restaurants i i I similarly similar 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 similarly have that approach when I, when I go on the road for the most part, but I do have some go-tos like Cava is a go-to for me. If I'm, if, if I have an opportunity to go get one of those um, bowls, I, I will go get that. But I am typically when I'm on the road or I'm out of town, I'm not trying to eat at the red lobster, even though red lobster has some outstanding cheddar biscuits and I don't eat it Larry Lobster enough in Columbia I don't like the places like Olive Garden Red Lobster you know the, the 
the chains. I don't really eat a lot of chains. But chains would be, you know, sometimes they're the go-to on the road. Like, especially when I'm done, I finish at a particular hour of the night. Not a lot of stuff is open. So what's your what's your rule? What, what, what are y'all? Do y'all now I know one of my partners, he listens to the podcast and it 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 took pulling teeth to get him to order something other than chicken chicken tenders. So I I doubt that he is very adventurous when he's out and about in other parts of the country. Um, but what let me know what in the comments, there's some people that leave comments. I appreciate comments. Uh, shout out to you that that gives comments. Matter of fact, the reason I'm wearing this T-shirt is a comment from one of one of my friends, another one of my friends that an avid listener to the show was like, "Hey yo, right, rock your merch, your own merch." So this is a what you're not gonna do, Mike Goodwin special. You can get it on my website. Matter of fact, I'm doing a kind of a merch transition, so I don't know how much longer these will be around. We're gonna have some new models, some new things. But then shout out to to LU. This is the Lander University where I went to college. Um, shout out to I'm I'm a represent. I'm all about the represent. But my buddy, who who, who often gives me great ideas. I, when we have conversations, he always gives me a, a great idea that I run away and, and and try to do something with. As opposed to my other buddy, we now we three of us are all friends. The, the one friend that gives me great ideas, the other friends just tells me what he doesn't like. <laughs> so I often, you may see me, I wear my fraternity sweater. I, I used to have a banner in the back, but my buddy was like, you know, complaining about, and I, and I, I want everybody to feel welcome here. I want everybody to feel walk, welcome. So I, I, I removed my banner and it wasn't a good, good placement for the banner anyway. It, it did seem a little awkward. But he's always telling me the stuff that, but not giving no solutions, no ideas, man. Just just telling me problems. But my other buddy's like, hey, man, rock some of that merch. Bot out. This is what we're doing. Rocking the merch. So, again, athletes in actions. That was uh, that was uh, Thursday night. That was in Statesboro. One thing I noticed that was very interesting in Statesboro, Statesboro has police officers and on the, not even Statesboro, it was just like that whole, because I think I stopped in a place called Waynesboro, um, just that whole, I don't know if that's South Georgia, I don't know the, the directions specifically, but what part of Georgia it is, but in God we trust we're on the police vehicles. Yeah. I don't know if we have that in South Carolina. I need to watch a little bit more, have a, be a little bit more aware. But I, I saw this in, in multiple cities in Georgia. In God We Trust what was on the police officer cars. So shout out to the law enforcement agents and uh, officers because <laughs> I trust in God too. Also, along with that, that night I was at the at the show this this woman walked up to me and asked me, did I know Wayne Coley? And the name sounded very familiar. I was like, I don't think I, I, I the name sounds familiar. And she's like, Country Wayne. I'm like, oh, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know Country Wayne. I know of his exploits, of of his accomplishments. And she told me that she was one of his teachers because she was from Mid Midland, Savannah, you know, that whole, that area. That's where Country Wayne's from. Statesboro was a spot that, you know, if you if you go if you know his story, I think he was in clubs. He started started uh started, I guess, owning clubs or co-owning clubs and having parties with people. So Statesboro, that you know that forty minute forty mile radius, all those cities that are around there. He he's from that he's from that area. So shout out to Statesboro athletes and actions, and also. On Saturday, I went back to Cali, going back to Cali, Cali, went to Sacramento, California, flew into Sacramento, but I was in El Durango. Yeah, El Durango, because in Arkansas, they say they El Dorado instead of El Durango. El Durango, yeah, El Dorado. See, I'm confused. 
district church did a uh, marriage conference. Love doing marriage conferences. Did a marriage conference for the district church. I had done the district church back in October of 22. And basically we ended up having, I, they had three services. So I did like, I did like a set in each service. So I did three different sets during the Sunday service, about 15 minutes, about 18 was the most that I did. That was back in 2022. And then I just, again, was with them for their marriage conference, man. I, I really enjoy doing again, marriage conference. Uh, one of the goals, and I, I'm gonna talk a little bit more by the end of the podcast about goals. One of the goals I want to have by the end of this year, I think that'll be good. Y'all can hold me accountable to this. I want to start, uh, I want to have a, a, a marriage set. Like when I do my sets at, at marriage conferences, marriage events, I want to have like a marriage specific set. I'd even talk to my wife about recording a special with a particular outlet. I, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to record that set with that, the particular people that I was talking about. Um, I'm getting Texas from Jeremy who edits the podcast while I'm doing the podcast. So I'm going to text him recording the podcast. Cause I didn't put my phone on airplane mode. So this is what happens. I probably should have put my phone on airplane mode, <laughs> but yeah, we're back to California. I uh, did the marriage conference. I, like I said, I, I want to record a set that's specific for for um like a marriage conference not a marriage conference but a marriage set like a, a comedy set and i don't i don't know if it's like a whole special i think the idea if i get 30 minutes of like my marriage material would i i can in kind of interchange it with different stuff but i, I do want to write more uh, around the topic of marriage because it literally consumes my life because I'm married. Matter of fact, one of the buddies I was having a conversation with, uh, we were having a discussion about college. And he was sharing some thoughts about how he thought, you know, college was overrated. And, and, and we made that statement, but then we came back and had the conversation. And I said, well, similarly, the way you feel about college, I'm sure some people could say that marriage is overrated. And I think that may be a good place to start. I think that might be a good place for me to like how many people think marriage is overrated? Because I think a lot of people do think marriage is overrated. And then I can get into the context. The con I can get into my content with that. You know, that's how comedy works, man. Like you throw you throw them off balance. So if I get up and I'm like, man, I think I think marriage is overrated. Whoa, what's he talking about? Now we can we can get this thing popping. So hold me, hold me accountable to that. But I was in California. Actually, something happened in California. That I'm not very proud of, but it's going to be an episode on the podcast. So I won't, I'm going to tease it. I won't spoil it, but it, it, it doesn't make me look like I got my act together. It's like, Mike, what, what are you doing after <laughs> missing a whole event? What I did this weekend, it, it, it's going to further, like, I don't know, your confidence in my abilities. That's why I'm like, you know, when people try to make people out to be like, oh, man, you don't make mistakes. Things go your way all the time. No. I'm constantly making mistakes. So if I can do it, I don't know what's holding you back from doing it. Cause I'm telling you, man, I'm, I'm, I'm a sharp guy, but bro, look, Hey man, I'm, I'm flawed. I mess stuff up. I make bad decisions. I fumble the bag. I fumble the ball. I drop, I dribble the ball off my foot. Like I do all those things, but you know what I do also? I keep it moving. I keep going forward. I keep, I brush myself. I get up, brush myself off and I move forward. So I guess my mistakes will be more uh, <laughs> enrichment for your life. And I'll, I, again, that'll be a future podcast episode. It was a great lesson I learned. Speaking of lessons learned. Let's talk about the best advice ever, because that's the name of this podcast. I want to share with you the best advice ever that I want to share today. And it was something that I grew up playing spades. I don't know if you're familiar with the game of spades, but I grew up 
playing space. I thought everybody knew how to play spades. Apparently, they do not. Matter of fact, the people in my home don't know how to play spades, and it's my responsibility to teach them. And I probably need to do this pretty soon because my daughter's going to be going to college here in about two years. So I need her to be equipped with some spades, uh, some some uh, some spades competencies. That's what I need going on in my life. But I grew up playing space. Folks next door to me, we play space. And one of the things I heard oftentimes when you play space is it's going to be the best advice ever. People talk, trash talk, man. I, I, I played spades growing up. I played basketball growing up. Like people, I just was in an environment where people talk trash. And it was very fun loving. I mean, you, 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 can, you can get in your feelings if you want to, but uh, that may be a conversation to have in the future about teasing. He was teasing me. But we were roasted. We roasted people. But one of the things that people would say when you're playing cards, study long, study wrong. You're looking at your cards, you're looking at the board, you're trying to make a decision. Should you cut? Should you play off? Should you cut, you know, should you bump heads with your part? Like you're looking at the, and if you're taking a long time, the people that you're playing with will say, study long, study wrong. And that's the best advice today. Study long, you study wrong. Now, I'm not telling you not to research. I'm not telling you not to prepare. What I am telling you is be confident in your decision, i.e. trust your gut. Trust your gut. Something happened to me this weekend, and I did not trust my gut, and the things went awry. <laughs> they went awry. My gut in that moment told me, hey, man, do this. I didn't do it. Now I'm on a unnecessarily drama-filled journey, right? Study long, study wrong. It's the idea of uh, uh, paralysis by analysis. You're doing so much. You're gathering information. You're, you're doing your research. You're doing your R&D. You're doing all the background. You're getting citations. You're getting notes. You're getting verifications, all, all the evidence. But you're not making a decision. You're not executing. Study long, study wrong. Hey, man. I would rather you be 80% correct than 100% of doing nothing. <laughs> you have no data. You have no information. Do it, get the information, and do it again. And do it again. And do it again. But if you study long, you study wrong. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm a witness to this. There are things that I've been wanting to do for a long time. I'm studying long. And at this point, I'm just procrastinating. I'm not even studying long. I've just dropped the ball, right? So I would encourage you to build up more confidence in your abilities to make good decisions. How do you do that? You stack good days on top of good days. You make good decisions. Good decisions begat more good decisions, right? That is the goal for me as a parent. I have a lot of kind of goals for my children. You know, I want them to 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 have a relationship with God. I want them to walk in the word. I want them to be um, good citizens, good people, make good decisions. I, you know, I have a, a number of, of goals and desires for my children. But one of the biggest ones I have is for them to be problem solvers, right? Problem solvers. And I think that, is a challenge with this generation. We, we're so helicopter parent. We're so engaged and we have such a, a, a detailed agenda for them. You do this and do you do that? And do we do this? that when they get a free moment, they're just like, I don't know what to do. Or when they get encountered with a, a problem, they want somebody to tell them what to do. And I, and I don't, I don't think that's I don't think that's good life that that doesn't produce good life skills like great life skills is having to problem solve. Oh, this has never happened before. Let me figure out an answer for this situation. 
So study long, you study wrong. I I, I would tell you, man, I, I'm reading this book, the 100 essays, 101 essays that would change the way you think. And they made a statement. I might have said this before, but it was so it was such an eye opening, such an eye opening statement. It says there's no good or bad, like right or wrong, in terms of how your brain processes. You either comfortable or uncomfortable. Yowzers, man! You either comfortable or uncomfortable. That's what we got. And I'm trying to, or I would encourage you to try to be more uncomfortable than comfortable. Now, I don't, I don't know what the ratio is. I don't know if you should be 60% uncomfortable, 40% comfortable. But a lot of people are 100% comfortable. <laughs> and they're 100% frustrated because their life does not look the way they want it to look. Get uncomfortable. Get uncomfortable and make positive quality make bad decisions once you make a bad decision you recognize okay i got the data i won't make that decision again now i'm I'm not i'm great for that like i man i make mistakes but look very seldom do i make the same mistake you know people like oh he got a bunch of issues well just make sure it's not the same issue make sure it's a different issue i remember my pastor was saying something like that about like people got all these issues well, just make sure it's not the same issue. Like, I got an issue of GQ. I got an issue of men's health. I got an issue of essence. I got an issue of everything. I got issues, but they not all the same issues, right? So study long, you study wrong. Action. I know. Don't wait for all the stars to align. Don't wait for everything to be perfect. Don't wait for the favorable settings. Do it in the rain, man. Get it done. Study long, you study wrong. So that's been today's. Best advice ever. Now, the mind of Mike. Got a lot of stuff on my mind. I keep a lot of stuff on my mind. Uh, One of the things that's on my mind is the all-star game. Do you like it? Do you enjoy it? I was talking to a buddy of mine recently. It was just like, he wasn't really feeling. He probably watched like the first quarter. I watched it because my kids watch it. Matter of fact, I had a very strange experience i'm watching the all-star game i'm looking at a play i don't know who the player is I'm like who's this player and my daughter's like that's scotty burns scotty burns he plays in toronto went to with the florida state i was like yo my children are telling me who nba players are <laughs> all-star game my thoughts i didn't enjoy it uh that that, that, that shoot shot fest I, 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 I'm more of a, you know, back in the day, play a little defense, make it competitive. I do enjoy the three-point shooting. I think that that was very – That's I, the three-point contest is always great. The the, the contest between Steph and um, old girl Sarah – I don't know. I forgot her name. Um, plays for the New York Liberty. I enjoyed that. Anytime there's some skill of shooting, enjoy that. The dunk contest, ah. Now, what I did enjoy was the Rising Stars playing the G League. That was great because they had um, kind of like a round robin type scenario where two different ones played, and then they played again. They played the whole tournament that night. I enjoyed that. But I think that was like Friday night, uh, which is maybe kind of an all night. I've never been to the All-Star game, so I – I'm sure that the, being there was a spectacle and of enjoyment. But how do you feel about the All Star Game? I I feel like the NBA needed to revamp it. They revamped and, and created the mid tournament, the mid season tournament. I think they need to really take a look at how they do the, the All Star Game, much like the NFL did with the Pro Bowl and changed it to flag football, which I think is a wonderful uh, adjustment in, in how they're doing what they're doing. Similar, I'm, I'm always on ESPN. I'm always on ESPN app. I'm always looking at the, at the headlines. Big uh, college, women's college basketball fan because I'm a fan. And you may not know this, but I, co- I coached uh, girls basketball for a couple of years when I worked at Heathwood. So I, I'm, I pay attention to the game, especially, I, you know, the lady, the, the, the Gamecocks, the women Gamecocks. I don't know if lady, I think we're not, we're not using that terminology. But the women, I enjoy Dawn Staley's teams and all. The, the winning tradition she's created. But I do like 
you know, other other programs and other players. Caitlin Clark is out there burning it up. I saw something at ESPN. And it was very like, whoa. So I saw and 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 this is what I think about, you know, clickbait, right? The the headline read Clark kept in check in the blowout loss to IU. Shout out to Indiana University. Um, so I'm like, yo, I saw the score, but I didn't know what Caitlin, I didn't know what Caitlin had scored. And it was like kept in check. So I'm like, yo, she she had to have no points. You know, when somebody said kept in check, I clicked the link. Caitlin scored 24 points, man. Hey, man, you ain't keeping nobody in check. <laughs> they scored 24 points. What? I guess if you look at, like, if you score six points a quarter, maybe that's kept in check. That, that, that didn't seem that. Six points a quarter, yeah, you know, that's 24 points at the end of the game, but. I guess I could feel a little bit how that could be like, oh, we kept her in check. Yo, somebody dropped 24 points, though. I don't know about keeping. I don't know about keeping them in check. Uh, also, if you held me to 24 points, I went off. <laughs> 24 points. You held me to nothing. I got off. Now, we lost. You held me to 24 points. That. I saw that. That was I thought that was pretty interesting. Also, shout out to the South Carolina baseball team. I'm not a baseball guy, but I'm a South Carolina guy, so I watched the baseball team. I think uh Mark Kenston got a <laughs> I think he got a great score. They lost one of the two game, one of the, they had a three game uh t- um series with Belmont this weekend. They lost the middle game. But they won the other two. Shout out to nicknames, like the names one of the guys is uh on, on the team is Cole Messina, but every time he comes up, I call him Funky Cole Messina. So I, that's what I do. I try to get names for people that I, I really enjoy watching. Speaking of names, the Clippers, the LA Clippers have um, updated their, uh, Lou, 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 have updated their logo, their logo, their brand. They're building a new uh, facility. they for as long as they've been in existence, they played in the same place where the Lakers have played. So they kind of feel like the little brother of L.A. Well, the Clippers, I don't know if you know this, you know what the Clippers represent? Like, the reason for the Clippers? I did not know. I thought, I didn't know. And I saw that they were, you know, rebranding and, and, and kind of refreshing their their brand. And the Clippers, it, it represents sailboats. They were the team was originated in San Diego, and these sailing boats were known as Clippers, and that was hence where the L.A. Clippers came from. I thought they were like the Clippers that cut your hair or something, man. I I never knew like the Clippers just. I just went with it. They're the Clippers. The Clippers they like trip people up. They like clip. They clip your you walk while you walking down the hall. They the L.A. Barbers, the Clippers. This is they they get you night get nice cuts, nice shaves. Nah, sailboats. Matter of fact, they're gonna put in the new logo. They're gonna have a, a, a boat. So shout out to the L.A. Clippers that didn't have anything to do with barbershops and barbering. <laughs> All right, shout out. Uh, I want to give flowers to. Now, I don't know how y'all roll. I'm, I'm constantly on the road, as you notice. I'm traveling. So I'm always evaluating, especially when I fly. I want, or not even flying, I want to have uh, luggage that can accommodate the needs. I need something that I typically have, a blazer that needs to be folded up. And I, I hate putting blazers in suitcases. I don't hate it. I just I, I think maybe there's a better way to do that then the folding it up and putting it in the suitcase. So I figured out what well, didn't figure out. I found this, this company called half, half day, half day. And it's a duffel. I like the duffel. The, the challenge I have with the duffel in traveling, especially on the airline, if it's not heavy, it's not a bad idea. You know, I, I just, I just used it this weekend going to Sacramento. It was dope. It was dope. Uh, I was able to put it in the overhead. It wasn't, it wasn't very, 
It wasn't like I was carrying a body around. I really, I just had my, my blazer jacket. I had a dress shirt. I had my jeans, the sneakers that I was wearing, my toiletry bag, and then like the, my, my, you know, un- undershirt, underwear, like the little socks, you know, small things. So there wasn't no additional clothing, but there's enough room in there to, to check it out. So I'm going to give flowers to, to a company called Half Day. I don't have a, I don't have a affiliate link or anything. It, it, just check it out. If you, if you purchase one, let me know what you think about it. I do want a, um, a weekend bag. I want a leather weekend bag. I have a weekend bag. It's cool, but I, I do want to upgrade my, my luggage. I, I like my, I like my carry on, but I, I, what I did like about the weekend bag was you can slip it inside of the handle on side that's on your carry on. I don't know if it's, so if I would if I would do the duffel and my um my my carry on bag or my my standard suitcase, I can't carry my book bag. My book bag is very vitally important for me because I can. It's very uh multi purpose. I can use it to travel. I can use it when I go to the event if I need to take some things with me. If I were to get that duffel bag, I wouldn't have the ability to use that duffel bag. So maybe I would just have to carry a notebook over or. So that you kind of have some pros and cons. Maybe if there's a weekend bag that I can put a suit in, I think I would be interested in in checking that out. So if you know any uh, luggage accessories or things that you would love to recommend it, shoot them my way. Info at comedianmikegoodwin.com. Uh, shout out to baseball season again on what you're not going to do. I was looking at some of the scores from different teams. I saw Texas Tech. Scored 32 points in a baseball game. What you're not going to do is score the equivalent of a football score in a baseball game. Texas Tech beat my, my dude. My dude is uh, my dude is Marcus Wiley. He went to TSU. They, they put 32, 32 to 5. Also, Texas A&M scored 34. School called Wagner scored 4. Like, I, hey, man, we got to fight. You put up 30 points. 30 runs, 34. Man, we're not shaking hands after this game, man. What you're not going to do is score 32 runs in a baseball game. No, man. No. I don't like it. Not a fan of it. Ah. Thank y'all. This has been another episode. Now, I did. I say I want to share this before I get off. I would love for y'all to hold me accountable to my goals. I'm going to share some of my goals. And, I, and I'm being more mindful of, of setting goals. I, I was just listening to something. Listen to a lot of stuff, podcasts, books on tape, all, all kinds of things. But it was basically saying that you're going to hit what you don't aim at. If you don't aim at anything, you're going to hit it. So I, I want to start aiming at something. And I aim at things, but I, I want to be a little bit more intentional at aiming. So one of the goals that I, some of the goals I'll share with you the podcast listeners every month i want to read at the minimum two books read because i do listen to books on tape but i'm not i'm not counting that as the books that i read i'm talking about i want to read sit down with the hard book and read two of those a month um i'll I'll, we'll we'll see if i make my goal uh i'm there's two books i'm reading right now i don't know if i'm gonna get it done but that, that's my goal. Two books a month. Um, also, I want to lose five pounds by the end of the month. We may roll this over to September, to uh, September, to March. We probably need to roll it to September because that's how long it's going to take me to lose five pounds. But I was looking at my license on my license. Uh, my weight says one, one, 210. I'm like, man, that'd be great to get back to 210. I think right now I'm kind of hovering around 230. So by the end of February, let's get to 225. That's my goal. Then by the end of March, let's get to 220. Um, I, I think by the, my birthday, my birthday is July 18th. I would love to be at the 210 mark. And I would love to hover around 210, 215. I think if I can get myself back into that area, feel good, look good, look good, play good, play good, pay good, you know, the whole deal. So those are goals. Two books a month. Lose five pounds. Also, get my TED Talk recorded. I'm working. I've been I've been doing a lot of stuff. You know, 
what what I will like, study long, study wrong type TED my TEDx talk was something that was in that same category. So want to get the TEDx talk, have an application. I'm not in the process of making an application. Now you make an application to multiple places, but this is by the end of 2024 have made my, have given a TED talk. So two of those goals are the monthly, but then that, the, the one I just gave you, that's for 2024. For by the end of the year, I will have needed to have done a TED talk. So those are my goals, man. I'm going to be a lot more intentional about sharing my goals and having you as an accountability partner. And also, you can do the same for me. You can shoot. You can leave them in the comments. You can shoot them at info at mikegoodwin.com. I also want to talk a little bit more about marriage and parenting. I, I'm having some some challenges. You know, I'm having challenges like everybody else uh, with both my kids. Like, everybody, everybody got challenges. So I want to talk about, like, how am I navigating what are the you know issues that I'm up against? One of the things I got to talk to my daughter about that I'm a little dreading is the game. I got to give her the game from a male's perspective. I got to talk to her about purity and how to maintain purity and, and what young men will present in order to try to get something from her. So I, I'm, I'm not looking forward to having that conversation. And we've had talks, but I haven't given her, I haven't given her the game. I've given her an a, a example of a, of a good man and how I treat a mom. And, and huh. but that that's some of the things we're going to be talking about in some future episodes. But thank y'all again. I went a little further than I wanted to, but I think this all has been vitally good information. Hopefully you've enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed it recording. Again, this is Mike Goodwin from the Best Advice Ever podcast. I'll be back next week. Same back channel, same back place. You could have been anywhere in the world but you're here with me and I appreciate it, man. I'll see y'all next time. Peace.